and welcome back to the Genesis Science Report. Tonight we are taking a closer look at an intriguing geological discovery, specifically the age and origin of iron deposits known as banded iron formations, BIFs for short. Now these iron deposits, which were traditionally believed to be ancient relics from over two billion years ago, have recently been redated which has scientists proposing, oh, well, maybe they might actually be a billion years younger. This revelation isn't surprising for those of us who adhere to the biblical account of creation, yet many secular scientists are now being compelled to reevaluate some of their evolutionary models in light of these findings. To help us break down this study and its significance, I'm joined by Dr. Tim Cleary, a respected geologist holding advanced degrees from Western Michigan University and the University of Wyoming. Now, with over 30 years of experience in research and education, Dr. Cleary now lends his expertise to the Institute for Creation Research. He's authored several books, including the comprehensive work Carved in Stone, Geological Evidence of the Worldwide Flood. By the way, I've read this cover to cover an incredible work. It underscores his dedication to interpreting geological data from a biblical perspective. Dr. Cleary, it is great to have you on the show. Oh, it's great to be here, David. Listen, could you explain what banded iron formations, BIFs, are for mm -hmm. us and talk a little bit about their significance in geological research? Well, we often just call them BIFs in geology for the BIF, but they, <laughs> they are... Uh, an alternating layer, I have a piece right here from my home state of Michigan here with me. I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera, but it's layers of uh, red jasper a lot of times, along with in between it's a silvery looking hematite. And so you see, you know, layer after layer alternating between the jasper or the quartz rich component of the rock, almost like a chert or a flint, uh, which is microcrystalline quartz, alternating with layers of hematite. And this has been in the argument for many, many years, many decades amongst conventional geologists trying to explain, you know, this shows there's evidence that there was oxygen early in Earth's history to oxidize these minerals and to make those minerals red. Uh, so there's people that argue that the early Earth didn't have oxygen because you couldn't form life with the presence of oxygen the way they see it. And so this kind of contradicts that all along. So it's uh, the BIFs or the banded iron formations are very interesting in their own right. And they're found on every continent. And so you can see them in North America, you know, Africa, anywhere you want, Australia. Uh, this particular study that we're going to talk about today is from Australia, but uh, they're pretty common. Uh, in some of these pre-Cambrian rocks, before the traditional flood rocks, you know, some, maybe some of these are some of the early Earth's uh, environments that was, you know, God had some of these areas in the world where they were uh, producing these layers of hematite and quartz-rich uh, rock that had hematite in it. And so some of this is, is kind of a study that I'm I'm not quite sure as a, as a flood geologist where to go with explaining these, but these do appear to be uh, some remnant of an early earth environment uh, that was forming. Definitely there was oxygen. So so how does secular scientists, again, typically explain the, the BIFs, the formation of these, and they're found all over? Well, they have to just argue that there's alternating layers where they're early life on Earth was starting to produce these uh, marine algae, was starting to produce that somehow it formed, of course, on their own, that they were producing oxygen and photosynthesizing and producing oxygen, and that oxygen would, would be sucked up by these rocks immediately. And so you get some layers that were oxidized, and then you go to the next layer that wasn't, and you get more oxygen. It was kind of an alternating uh, theory. Some people even think this might have been on an annual cycle, uh, but uh, nobody really knows. But they, they kind of struggle trying to explain why you see this alternating pattern of you know, minerals that have been oxidized, showing there's oxygen there and then not. And so they have t different models, but none of them really explain the, you know, the worldwide presence of these features and how prevalent they really are in some of these Precambrian rocks. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you mentioned that uh, they're found in many different places. The w study that we're looking at today was in Australia, but they've been observed mm -hmm. other areas, other countries? Right, yeah, we have them in our, in our own country here in North America. Uh, a lot of these have been mined for iron because they're very rich in iron. And uh, so this is part of the resources that I believe God put in the earth for, for us to use uh, to extract to make metals out of. So we, we still mine some of these banded iron formations in Minnesota and in Michigan and some of these open pit mines and around the world. And so they're they're very useful. They're not just an academic exercise. They've been actually, uh, you know, it's one of our main sources to make steel. 
And I still have to get up to Michigan uh, to do a little bit of uh, rock hunting with you. I cannot wait to do that. Uh, this, um, this study, it says a billion year shift in the formation mm -hmm. of Earth's largest ore deposits. Mm -hmm. Now, Tim, let me just point out a couple of words here because I'm reading okay. through um, basically an abstract on this and, and things that pop up are up to a billion years younger than previously and now we come with fuzzy words and magic words, estimated. They also mm -hmm. appear to have formed within a geological time frame. Uh, it is thought that the trigger for this mineralizing event operated at this scale all of these fuzzy words where it's almost like, well, hey, we don't really know and we're having to completely rethink all of these scientific theories regarding banded iron formations. What do you think about that, Tim? Well, I think it's it's typical of a lot of studies. These, it's, it's surprising how honest they are in this case in some, in some regards because they're showing that their previous studies, you know, they, they always thought these banded iron formations in Australia were around 2 billion years old. Uh, in this case, they re- assessed them studying uranium lead and they found out they're only about 1 billion years old 1.1 to 1.4 billion years old so they're you know almost a billion years younger than they thought so now they're saying well there has to be two episodes of banded iron formation going on one you know one billion years ago one two billion years ago uh, but it's it's it, it, it to me it shows the inaccuracies of age dating in general it's another example of showing you know if you do a study you make a completely different results from what previous, you know, researchers have found, and, and that's more common than you're led to believe by the conventional science community. Absolutely, and that's what good science should be all about. We should be uh, intellectually honest enough to be able to talk about how some things are pointing us in directions that previously unknown, that's following new evidence, that's following mm -hmm. new data. But at the same time, when you present all of the older evidence, the older theories as absolute fact, and then you're talking about two billion years, and then you find evidence to the contrary, it's like, well, maybe we should have been less specific about telling people that they were two billion years old in, in the past, and let's move to what modern scientific research is suggesting. Now, in your view, how do these BIFs fit into the creation flood model found in the biblical record? Well, as I, as I was, I was trying to explain this earlier. It, it, I believe these are probably pre-flood environments between the creation and the flood, and there was some sort of special environment, uh, special waters, and and again, fairly common because it's found on almost every continent today that we know of. Uh, you get these alternating iron-rich waters, and there must have been some sort of a a special environment that God created as part of his water cycle, his, his pre-flood water cycle. Okay. And so exactly how they fit in. And these, these all, they have all been evidence of deformation. You know, during the flood, these rocks have been folded and twisted and, and bent. And so I think there's a lot of evidence that during the flood, these rocks were affected and, and kind of cooked and squeezed, but they're still there. And so I think God really did in his uh, providence left these exposures, these rocks exposed in enough places to help us to make metals like steel and things like that. Absolutely. But exactly how they, you know, what the environment was, that needs to be a lot more study, uh, needs to be done. I don't, I don't believe, of course, that these are billions of years old. I think these are just, you know, 6,000 years old. God probably created these special environments just like he created the environments for trilobites. Uh, what's odd is we often find these BIFs, these banded information rocks, associated with other sedimentary rocks that are pre-flood. Uh, and, and with some of them have stromatolites and things in them. So there was evidence of algae going on. Uh, and, and stromatolites today are only found in a couple of locations. One is in Australia where you have to have special water as well. So I, there is indications that the BIFs and the, or the banded iron formations and the, and these environments that produce these stromatolites so commonly in these pre Cambrian rocks were part of a pre flood environment that, that God created and had specially, uh, we don't find many fossils in these, uh, but we do find fossils nearby in other rocks. And so it, it's very, it's one of those things I still want to work on before I retire. You know, I'm getting up in years, but I want to, I like to look at some of these things in a little more detail and really try to understand more about the pre-flood world from what God left behind. Uh, even during the destruction of the flood, he left behind some remnants of the pre-flood world that we can study and try to understand. 
Uh, well, I'm expecting that to be in the updated and revised edition of Carved in Stone. Uh, we need that research. We need all of the research that you are doing. Again, when the study is using uranium lead dating, is yeah, that correct? I believe so. um, and we realize the inconsistencies of some of these dating methods, especially radiometric dating methods, uh, then we also realize that, well, just because they backed it up one billion years doesn't mean that the more we study, it's gonna be backed up another billion years to fit solely in a 6,000 year timeline. It's the interpretation of the data that is inconsistent, not the data. The data that we are finding mm -hmm. throughout geology, Tim, your research uh, mm -hmm. in mega sequences, your research throughout all of these models is consistently pointing us right back mm -hmm. to historical events recorded in God's word, meaning that it's true from the very beginning all the way to the very end. Tim, thank you so much for well, you're being here today and for sharing with us. Well, thank you for the time. Absolutely. I'm going to have to have you back in the future. And thank you for joining us on the Genesis Science Report. Until next time, I want you to keep looking up. I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God.